okay so welcome to the third video in the discrete structures series and in this video we'll be looking into the different set operations and a set identities maybe we, we get into the topics right away so set operations and identities so basically we'll be looking at what different operations we can perform with sets and what different facts about those operations are always true so an identity is a fact that is always true an operation is, is something that we perform on a group so let's say uh, on on the group of natural numbers one two three four i could perform an operation of addition subtraction and so on and what different operations can we perform with sets is the focus of our lecture today so we'll be first looking into the concept of union so union of two or more sets is a new set formed by considering all the elements in all the sets right and and making sure of course that no element repeats so quite a simple example let's say a equals one two a is a set containing these two elements b is another set containing let's say two and three and the union a union b would be new set that contains one two and three right i'm making sure not to include the repeated element two twice so quite a basic concept of of unions and of course i could apply the the, the same idea to to any number of sets right so a b c d or any number of sets like that and uh, the next concept is intersection so intersection in sets is obviously a new set formed by taking only the common elements if we consider the same sets a and b the intersection of a and b would just be a set containing the element two right so this is about intersection another set operation is the complement the complement and the complement of a set is a new set formed by taking everything that is not in the set so it's just a matter of definition so whenever we do a complementation so let's say a complement is in set builder notation it's it's a set of all elements x such that x do not belong to a uh, the next thing that we're going to be looking at is set difference okay and set difference is a new set a minus b is a set that contains all element x so that x is a member of a but then is not a member of b right so a typical example so if i were to take the same set a and b the set a minus b so i would pick up any element in a that's not in b right so one is only such element so a minus b in this case would be one right and what is uh you know again so i think we should always keep a habit of asking the why question right so why is this useful and this uh, seems a little bit weird in the, in the sense that you know, we're making an arbitrary decision right i want uh, everything in a and uh, that is not in b what about these three that is in b why do i not care about it so the, the answer hopefully is we come across many situations where this pattern of taking a difference between two sets is really really useful so let's say you you have a set of students and a bigger set of players so there are going to be students that are players and when i ask for students minus players so what i'm really asking is who are those people that are students but not players right so they are only students this is a very logical question to ask right so let's say i'm i'm, I'm managing a database server uh, i have two tables of data i want to i want to maybe know what records exist in the first table and do not exist in the second table right so there are obviously going to be players that are really not students right like this number three but in, in the question in the frame of the question which students are not players those players don't matter so so set difference is a really useful construct and it's used all over the place so these are a few basic you know set uh, operations that we can perform in in different sets and i think we should be looking into the set identities next uh, let me pan my board a little bit the next thing is set identities and what do we mean by an identity an identity is, is basically an equation that is always true right a fact that is always true it doesn't matter what the variables are and changing a variable doesn't change the result so let's say if i if i were to say x square is equals to 2x what is this this is really an equation this is not true for all values of x it is only true when when let's say x is 2 or if x is 0 
right so these are the only two cases when this would actually be true but if i, if I say something as if you take x over 2 and multiply by 2 you get x now this this is true regardless of what value of x i choose and uh, this equation is an identity so there could be an equation that we could solve for an value or, or there could be identities right which are essentially also equations but they're always true and what are these different identities that we can discover in the world of sets and all the different set operations you know union uh, intersection inter you know difference and complement that we learned about so we'll, we'll, we'll you know list these identities and, and try to go through each of them see why uh, they are true and so on the first set of laws are called the identity laws so this this identity is, is kind of a little bit different than this identity right so identity laws means you know laws that govern identity elements okay so let's get a little bit more context uh, to it an identity element is an element which when applied on a given operation results to the same input so let's say i, I want to consider a set operation union and I take any element a right and what can i really take you in in union with a so that the end result is still a right and this is obviously the empty set right so if i if i take union of a with the empty set i get everything in a and nothing else right so that's exactly equal to a i could say that the empty set phi is actually the identity element uh, under union because uh, no matter what i take the union against it's always going to result into the same element right and i can look for another identity element under the operation of intersection so if i were to look into any set and try to get the same set what would i need to really intersect uh, with a to to ensure that i get the same set and the answer here is the universal set right because if i choose anything else i risk uh, you know having a set that might not contain some elements in a but having chosen u i can pretty much ensure that all the elements in a are in u therefore when i take the intersection the result is going to be a strictly a right because it's a intersection something so it's it's not going to be uh, more than a so it's called the identity law these two are called identity laws and this this help us find two identity elements under two operations union and intersection now the next set of laws that we care about are called the idempotent laws and the term idempotent refers to a process that can be applied any number of times without changing the result of an operation so let's say in terms of a number theory multiplying a number by one right so if i multiply three with one i get a three and if i do that uh, multiple times any number of times in fact i get the same result right so i could do three into one again three times one three right? you get the idea so in, in set theory there are only two uh, really uh, idempotent laws right so union if I take a union of a set with itself, I'm always going to get the same set and I could repeat this any number of times and it would hold true. And the same thing goes with intersection. If I take the intersection of a set A with itself, any number of times, it is still going to give me the same set. So these two laws are called idempotent laws. Uh, there are two other secondary laws called, called domination laws. Let's go over them too. Domination laws and in, in these laws you know one of the operands kind of dominates the other and then becomes the result right so if i take a and i want to take a union and i want something that will dominate a and become the result itself so what is that going to be so if i take the union with the universal set no matter what a is the universal set will dominate it will take over and become the result right so this is one a domination identity so I could look for another identity in terms of another operation. So if I were to do intersection and look for something that would dominate uh, the intersection, I would put the empty set, right? And that would uh, dominate and make the result itself the empty set. So, you know, if I put anything else, I risk having an element common to A, right? And the result would not be the same thing. It would just be the intersection. So if by putting an empty set, I'm ensuring that the result is the empty set. So the universal set dominates over union, the empty set dominates over intersection. Okay, so we'll get into commutative laws next, commutative laws. And uh, the word commute means to, to exchange, right? Or to interchange. So a commutative law would hold if when interchanging the values that go into an operation, the result is unchanged. So let's say 
in, in normal mathematics, right? It's always an easy example to see. Let's say 2 plus 3 plus 5 is 10. If I change the order of operations here, so if I change, you know, 3 plus 5 plus 2, I'm still going to be, you know, getting 10, right? So no matter how I change, you know, these, these operands, I'm still going to, you know, get the same result. So I say that 2, 3, and 5 or, or any natural numbers are commutative under addition. You know, I could commute their, their places you know and and it, it would still give the same result but this is not true about subtraction right a minus b minus c would definitely not be the same as b minus a minus c for example so addition is commutative while subtraction is not right so we we intend to look which operations are commutative versus which are not in 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 context of set theory now in in terms of set theory we have uh, a few commutative laws and uh, we can commute under union a union b would be the same as b union a and it would hold for any number of sets and uh, it would also commute under intersection a intersection b would also be the same as b intersection a and it would also hold for any number of sets so the next law we see is associative law associative law and this really talks about groups or associations you know or or order of operations so for an uh, you know operation to be associative uh, it should not really matter how you group the operands. I'll take the same example, 2 plus 3 plus 5 is equal to 10. To, to calculate this, how am I really calculating in my head? So I, I, I either need to calculate these two first, get a 5, and then add 5 and get 10. Or I could add these two first, get an 8, and then add 2 to get 10. No matter what I do, I'm still getting the same 10, right? So this is different than, than, than the other law that asked me to change the order of, of these operations, right? So this one really talks about grouping, whether or not I put a bracket here and add these two first, or I choose to put a bracket over here and add these two first, doesn't really matter, right? So I could associate these, these values in any way and get the same result. But what about A minus B minus C? Is this the same as this? Not really, right? So this would actually be the same as this if I put a plus here. So there are things, uh, that are actually associative and and things that are not right and in terms of set theory uh, we have uh, a couple of associations so let's say the association in in three unions a union b union c now if i take this association so let me put the same thing on the right hand side so if i take this union first it's going to be the same as taking this union first right so i could associate union in in any order I could do the same thing with intersection so a intersection b and then taking an intersection with c would give me the same result as a intersection and then b intersection c first right so both of these are are associative union and intersection uh, in set theory now the next set of laws are the the distributive laws and these laws tend to govern how one operation distributes over another so if i were to take a union of an intersection how can i do that so this law simply states that a union b intersection c would be a union b you could take the union with the first element take the you know common operator intersection and then take the union with the second element a intersection sorry a union c would be the result so this this works and why yeah, is is this and this equivalent it's easy to see a venn diagram you could construct a venn diagram and see that these represent the same areas in the venn diagram or it, it's possible to kind of logically make sense of this right so if if i'm looking at this expression all i really mean is i'm taking the union of a and whatever is common between b and c right so everything in a common in b and c put all of that together right so that's what i'm doing here and if i look at this expression Am I getting everything in A? That's my first question. So it's A union B. It has everything in A. And A union C, this has everything in A, right? So this whole intersection will definitely have everything in A because everything in A exists here and everything in A exists here. So A will be there in full. But what else? Will everything in B also be in, 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 in this result? I, I don't think so, right? Because, uh, you know, where you're taking an intersection with elements of c and c might not you know contain some elements in b so that this intersection would you know eventually omit that so what i can guarantee would remain is anything that is the intersection of b and c sorry b and c so this is really telling you know the same fact right so a union b intersection c 
is the same as this. Now you could also distribute intersection over union. A intersection B union C equals A intersection B. And then you, you take the common one, union, and then you distribute A intersection C. So these are our distributive laws. The next set of laws that we're interested in are the complement laws. So complement laws. Now the complement laws, you know, describe the laws governing complements, obviously. And these are quite simple. The complement of a complement is the same set. So if I take a set A, A complement is everything not in A. And then if I take a complement of that again, I get back the same set. So this should be easy enough. Another identity we have is A union, A complement. What should this be equal to? A and everything not in A. So that would be the universal set. So the third one we have here is A intersection A complement. I'm taking A and I'm trying to intersect with everything but A, right? So I'll not get anything. So it, it's going to be an empty set. So this, this is quite trivial. Uh, another one quite interesting, phi complement. What should this be? This is the empty set. It doesn't contain anything. So apart from this should be everything, right? So it should be the universal set. And similarly, U complement is going to be phi. Right? There's nothing that doesn't exist in the universe, so to speak. All right. So these are uh, the different complement laws. So the next uh, really important law is D Morgan law, D Morgan's laws, right? So these laws uh, govern how you complement unions and intersections, right? How, how complement breaks, you know, inside of unions and intersections. So if I take a union of two sets, A union B, and I complement all of it, I'm going to get A complement, B complement, and this union is going to flip into an intersection. And the same thing's going to happen with intersections. So A intersection B complement would be A complement union B complement. Now, it's also true to do it with three sets or four sets or any number of sets. And I think that it's, it's also really important to, to generalize this in a way. What happens if I take A union B intersection C complement? Does this law still apply? And, you know, turns out that it does, right? All you need to do is to follow the same concept. You know, it, these, it, it, these are not the same operations. One of them is a union and another one is an operation, but you could still apply the same concept. So this would be A complement, flip it make it an intersection, B complement, flip it again, make this intersection into a union, and then, you know, do the complement of the last variable. So uh, this is, you know, uh, an application of De Morgan's law, and, and you'll find uh, these laws, you know, used all over the place, you know, like Boolean algebra and, and so many other, other disciplines. Okay, so that concludes our, our overview on set operations and identities. And uh, in the next video, we'll be looking at the inclusion and exclusion principle and also computer representation of sets. You know, our, our, our course has been pretty lame, sort of, you know, all these topics we already know. So hopefully we're gonna get into to new and exciting topics uh, in, in the upcoming videos. So see you guys in the next one. Have a good day and bye.